Hello. Welcome to our presentation on rapid IoT device identification at the edge. We will start with an introduction, followed by the methodology, evaluation and conclusion. IoT devices are becoming increasingly common in everyday households, from smart speakers to voice assistants and security cameras. Along with their benefits come potential privacy and security threats. These devices send encrypted data to different parties. While some data may be sent to first party device manufacturers, other data may be sent to third parties, for example, analytics and advertising, or support parties, for example, cloud service providers. Various mitigation strategies attempt to improve the privacy of IoT devices by blocking or restricting certain traffic based on its destination. The problem is that different devices may use a given domain for different purposes. If a particular domain, shown here as cloudprovider.party.com, if it's always blocked by a blanket blocking policy, then certain IoT devices may be prevented from performing their required function. A device specific approach is required. The first step towards implementing device specific mitigation strategies is accurate device identification. By understanding which IoT product the traffic belongs to, we can implement mitigation strategies on a device specific level, meaning improved privacy, accuracy and reliability. Due to the presence of several middle boxes and gateways, as well as traffic sampling from internet service providers, it is very difficult to identify specific devices from outside the local network. Our method aims to perform classification from inside the home network or at the edge. Device identification at the edge presents a number of challenges. Previous approaches to device identification rely on continuous and complete packet capture and data collection. This is not feasible on a device at the edge, which likely has limited computational resources. IoT traffic is unpredictable and can change for a number of reasons. These may include software updates to the IoT device or different usage patterns that may differ between households. In addition to this, IoT products who share a manufacturer are more likely to contact broadly similar destinations, and this may make product level identification more difficult than identification at the manufacturer level. Our method aims to identify an IoT device from its first few seconds of traffic after it boots and performs a DHCP request. This approach provides several advantages. We take advantage of the fact that the startup traffic is likely to be more repeatable than traffic sampled at an arbitrary time and can therefore make identification more reliable. Startup traffic is also less likely to be affected by user behavior and usage patterns, since we can assume there will be a period of zero or very little usage immediately after the device turns on. By performing the identification as soon as a device is booted up and connected to the network, device-specific mitigation strategies can be implemented more quickly and privacy threats can be reduced immediately. We will now discuss our methodology. Our experimental setup consists of a DNS and DHCP server, which run on a local network. The IoT devices under test comprise 30 different products from 27 different manufacturers, chosen for their popularity and prevalence in households. The power to each IoT device can be turned on and off individually through smart plugs, which can be controlled for a series of support scripts. To collect data, we turn off the IoT device through the smart plug and turn it back on again. The DHCP request from the newly booted device triggers the logging of the DNS queries for a certain number of seconds, known as the time delta. We conducted 51,000 controlled data collection experiments in this manner. Once the raw data is collected, it is pre-processed in order to generate the data set. The number of possible destinations or URLs is very large. To reduce this to a more manageable set, we compute a hash of a destination and assign each hash into one of H buckets, where H can be varied across different experiments. H is known as the hash resolution. This process loses some information given by the domains, but also effectively obscures the domains through the use of a non-reversible function which goes some way to improve privacy. We chose to compute the hash of the second level domain, or SLD. By only considering the SLD, we effectively group similar domains, e.g. time1.google.com and time2.google.com together, as they will hash to the same value. Once the hash of a particular endpoint is calculated, the hashed value is paired with the frequency with which that particular hash bucket appears in the DNS logs. This makes up the only features in our training dataset. 
The data set is split into training, testing and validation data with 60, 20, 20 split respectively. Neural networks were chosen as a means to learn traffic behavior, since we should consider not only the contacted destinations themselves, but also the patterns in which they appear in the time domain. To maximize accuracy, we explore the design space of neural networks to find the configuration that yields the best categorical accuracy. We conduct experiments with several thousand neural networks, varying hyperparameters such as number of layers and number of output classes, as well as characteristics of a data set such as time delta and hash resolution. We choose categorical cross entropy as the loss function and an atom optimizer for maximizing the target metric of categorical accuracy. We run the training over 100 epochs. However, we use early stopping to speed up training. Typically, the training is concluded around 17 epochs. We will now discuss the evaluation. The neural network was able to predict devices at the product level with an accuracy of 82%. This particular neural network comprised of two hidden layers and the dataset contained 30 seconds of DNS traffic hashed with a hash resolution of 32. The confusion matrix shows a number of testing data points that are classified and misclassified, with numbers along the main diagonal representing accurate classification. We can see that the Amazon devices, Echo Plus, Echo Spot and Fire TV are sometimes misclassified, suggesting that traffic from these devices is similar in its characteristics. When testing the same neural network with identification at a manufacturer level, the accuracy increases to 93%. We observed that particular manufacturers, such as Smart Life, are often predicted with less accuracy than others. When considering the effect of the hash resolution H on the categorical accuracy, we observe that accuracy increases as H increases up to around H equals 16, after which there is not much significant improvement. When identifying devices from a larger set of classes, it may be necessary to increase this value as the number of destinations increases. By training the neural network repeatedly on datasets generated over different time deltas, we can ascertain how long we should analyze traffic before making the prediction. This graph shows that the accuracy increases sharply up to around 10 seconds, after which it continues to improve more gradually to around 30 seconds. Time deltas larger than 30 seconds tend not to improve accuracy significantly. A challenge with IoT device identification is the constantly updating behavior of IoT devices. To determine how well our method retained accuracy over longer timescales, we restricted the neural network's training data to only include data gathered over two days. This network was then tested on unseen data gathered over the following week. We found that the model retains accuracy for the following week. By only considering the SLD, we build a generalized model of a device's DNS activity, which is likely more robust to minor changes over time. Conclusion. Some of the possible future directions for this methodology include periodically retraining the model to account for traffic changes over a longer timescale. In order to support more fine grained manufacturer level distinguishability, we aim to consider more seconds of initial traffic to improve the accuracy in these cases. There may also be scope to implement a crowdsourcing approach where changes in model weights from locally trained models are shared between home networks to benefit from information from a much larger data set. Our method is able to detect 30 IoT products at manufacturer granularity with 93% accuracy and at product granularity with 82% accuracy. While this detection may be useful to perform device specific DNS filtering of IoT devices at home, it raises concerns about the general detectability of such devices and the corresponding human activity. We have also established that roughly 30 seconds of IoT device DNS traffic should be observed in order to maximize the accuracy of the prediction, and that models can retain this accuracy over the course of a week. We show that product level identification is highly accurate, but may misclassify devices that share a manufacturer. Conducting the experiment at the manufacturer level eliminates this confusion and can classify nearly every manufacturer accurately. Thank you for listening. I'd be happy to answer any questions.